we've talked about this a little bit, but as I told the audience, I could never get Farley Granger ever to say one kind word about Samuel <laughs> Goldwyn. And I, I really tried. I kept saying, he discovered you. You yeah. were unknown. He made you world famous. We're here today to talk about you because of Mr. Goldwyn. Yeah. Terrible, hated everything I did with him, couldn't wait to get out of my contract. Huh. Did you have the same feeling Not about Mr. Oh, Goldwyn? Are you kidding me? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, Lord, no. Well, how would you characterize Mr. Goldwyn? Mr. Goldwyn was, and knew he was, a founder of Hollywood. That was very important to him. Um, he, as I said, he loved making movies. He was an extraordinarily optimistic man. Of course he was an autocrat. All of those men were autocrats. I mean, they, they started this business. Um, they came to know what they were doing. It was experimentation, certainly, in the beginning. Um, Mr. Goldwyn knew exactly who he was. He knew not so much what he wanted, but once he saw it on the screen, he knew exactly what he wanted. But he had to see it on he the screen. He had to see it. He would come down on the set, and the directors would say, oh, God, you know, here comes Sam, um, because he would give suggestions. Uh, but they really meant nothing, because he really didn't know what he was seeing till he saw it in the projection room. And the minute he saw whatever he saw in the projection room, that was right. That was wrong. He and, knew. He knew and he what knew, he was seeing. And he knew immediately. Um, was he intimidating? Oh yes. Oh Lord, yes. Yes. Oh yes. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I mean, he did something very funny with me. Uh, why he did it and why he allowed it is beyond me. But we had come back from Sonora, California. We spent the month of October in 1948 in Sonora. Uh, doing Rosanna McCoy and um, my first picture I was 14 years old uh, I had been on the stage but I certainly hadn't been in pictures and he had, was not happy with the rushes with the with the film that he saw uh, that we had shot in Sonora um, we had an extraordinarily difficult director uh, and Mr. Goldwyn called me up to his office when we came back, and his office was up on the second floor of his of the Goldwyn studio, uh, which in itself was, it had a staircase down on the outside where you would only Mr. Goldwyn used, and then there was the inside hallway up to his office, and it was kind of like a big nest. And uh, he uh, said he didn't like much of what we had shot, and for some reason, and I've never, later on, I, I've never understood quite why I had the guts to do this, but I said, Mr. Golden, could I see, could I see the film? Could I see what we shot? And he said, okay. And he called Danny Mandel, whose name was up there, who was the film editor, and he said, I'm sending the kid down, show her the film. <laughs> so I went down and I looked at it, and Irving Reese, who was, the director of that picture was a great one for making, oh Lord, 18, 24, 32 takes, 40 takes, and printing maybe four of them. So every, so we had prints of everything, four prints of just about everything. So I watched it, and I came back up to Mr. Golden's office, and I said, well, gosh, it, it looks to me as if at least one of everything is okay. I mean, I knew nothing. How idiotic. And he looked at me and he said, <laughs> he dismissed me. And I learned later that he called one of his vice presidents and said, you know what, that kid, she's smart. <laughs> so from then on, I was that kid and I was smart. So he gave you he had a certain respect for he you. He had, for some reason, a certain respect for me, yes. I know one day he walked up to me. I was going to New York on a personal appearance tour. And th this is the kind of thing he did. And he walked up to me on the street, on, on the Golden Lot, and he looked at me and he said, when you're in your New York, get your teeth fixed. <laughs> now, you, you were chosen.
after a national search, I yes. believe, yes. for Rosanna McCoy. Yes. It was to have been Kathy O'Donnell. It was to have and, been Kathy O'Donnell. And, and Farley Granger was very upset yes, because he it was. wasn't Kathy O'Donnell. Yes. But Goldwyn didn't choose Kathy O'Donnell because she had married William Wyler's brother. And he and, fired her. And he, and he was angry with oh, Wyler. He was, he was furious with Wyler. Why, for having left him. That's so right. So he fired Kathy O'Donnell, and I don't think Farley ever forgave him. He for never that. did. No, no, but Farley then, never did. But then there was a search, and you got. And I. And you were chosen. Yeah, I was. And you were only 14. Yes. Did you say you were 14, or was that. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, my mother and father were writers. And screenwriters. Screenwriters, playwrights, novelists. And um, my mother had, uh, my, they had both worked in the Hollywood studios. My mother had worked in the publicity department at MGM for years. They knew everybody in, in Hollywood. They knew all the writers. They knew everybody. I was sort of early on when I first came out um, to California. I was kind of the first of the second generation of people, not actors necessarily, but in my case, writers. Um, everybody knew my mother and father. Everybody knew me. And when I was signed by Mr. Goldwyn, it was as if my name was 14-year-old Joan Evans. That's all it said. I have, I have stuff my grandmother kept in my scrapbook, and all over my scrapbook there is 14-year-old Joan Evans. I was 14-year-old Joan Evans. That was my name. Um, somebody, somehow or other, finally got, and, and I don't know, where it came from. Farley was angry with Mr. Goldwyn. He was angry with Ka because Kathy was fired. And he got an impression somewhere that my mother and father had said I was 16 so that I could get the role. Um, absolutely out of Not true. smoke. Not true. Absolutely. As I said, that was my name, 14-year-old Joan Evans. It's an odd name, but uh, it was mine at the time. Now, you did three films with Farley yes. Granger. Um, he's terrific in this part, yes, don't you is. think? Yes, he is. Oh, boy, is I mean, he it's ever. it's quite a wow. performance. It's difficult, and he, he faces all the challenges. Yes, and indeed, he does. Them. Oh, yeah. What, did you get along with him? Yes, yes, I did get along with him. Um, when we did Rosanna... Uh, on our second, uh, the, the second time that we went up to Sonora, um, through a mistake, uh, I was accidentally shot very, very seriously, and Farley was holding the gun. Um, uh, well, I thought it was a mistake. <laughs> um, was that during the time that Nicholas Ray was doing oh, reshoots? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, it was. Yes, our original director had a job somewhere else. Um, and but you weren't sorry to see him go. Gosh, none of us was sorry to see him go. Uh, as a matter of fact, while we were, his name was Irving Reese, and he was a terrible, nasty bully. And he was not untalented, but he wasn't really nice. And as a matter of fact, when he went, he went to do a picture at 20th Century Fox with Mark Stevens. And uh, Nick Ray finished the last, the last uh, location when we went up to Sonora. And then when we came back after I'd been hurt, when we came back and finished the studio. And when we came back, word had spread that Irving Reese, our director, whom nobody really liked, had gotten into a fist fight with Mark Stevens. And the set broke out in applause. <laughs> so, you know. No. But Farley, uh, just yes. Farley, yeah. that night, the night that I was hurt, um, and it was very difficult for everybody because I, my mother and father were not up there. I was 14 years old, and nobody could sign a release to say that I could be operated on, that they could give me anesthesia. I was in a little 24 bed hospital in Columbia. California, which was two miles away from Sonora, and uh, it was very scary for everybody. Um, the doctor kept saying, you know, I'm going to have to do something about that. I'm going <laughs> to have to get in there and get all that black powder out of there. She's going to maybe lose the arm. 
And uh, eventually, because nobody could reach my mother and father, my mother was in New York, my father was out dancing that night. Um, and uh, they eventually the doctor said, I don't care whether there's anybody to sign the authorization or not, we're doing this. And the following morning, uh, they eventually, of course, reached my father, and he eventually came up to Sonora, and that was, thank God. But also, the follow following morning, Farley showed up at the hospital. Now, they understand, in those days, in Sonora, in Colombia, in any of those places, there was nobody like a florist. And Farley, I learned later, had been out jumping over people's fences <laughs> because the peach trees were coming into bloom, this was the end of March, the peach trees were coming into bloom and Farley was stealing peach branches so that I would have something in my hospital room. Now while you were working on these films, did you know that he was unhappy with the films, with Samuel Goldwyn, yes. with Hollywood, with his contract? He really had a dream of going to New York and becoming a stage yes, actor. Yes. You knew that. Yes, absolutely. That was clearly he was what he wanted. He he was very much involved with some very important intellectual intellectuals in Hollywood and important writers um, who sort of took him under their wing and convinced him that doing this dreck in Hollywood was beneath him. And that was part of that was part of the trouble. And he never really got over that. No, he liked Nicholas Ray, and they. He uh, liked they Nick not. very much. He liked Nicholas Ray, and, and he it liked was... Mr. Hitchcock, of course. Oh yes, but yes. that was about it. Yes, it was. No, he liked Nick very much, and it was Nick's fault that I was hurt, mm -hmm. um, as it turned as out. It. But uh, because Nick insisted that they put a full load of blank powder in the gun. Um, neither Farley nor I knew anything about guns. I was born in New York City, and in those days, New York wasn't full of guns. Um, certainly not in my house. And uh, Nick insisted that it be a full load. The gun uh, was very uh, stiff. The action on the gun was very stiff. Um, our property master, Irving Sindler, said, no, 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 I can't put a full load, because we were working very close. We were running up and down the mountains. And Irving said, no, no, I can't put a full load of black powder in there because very dangerous, something might happen. And Nick said, I am the director. We were talking about directors and uh, their autocracy. And he said, uh, I am the director. You're putting a full load in there. And he did, of course, because he had to. That was his job. And Farley and I are running up and down the mountain. And Farley had pulled the hammer back because the, the action on the gun was so stiff. And uh, we fell into the mountain, and he hit his elbow on the rocks, and the gun went off. And um, uh, and technically, that was Nick's fault. Technically, yeah. Nick's fault. 